try to do at least part of problem 13. Okay. Problem 13 is the same kind of question as problem 11, but for proportions. Sample proportions. Now, we would like to use the normal distribution for our calculations. Turns out we need to check a couple of things. Number one, that our sample is less than 5% of the total. And the second one, we have to do this calculation. n times p times 1 minus p has to be more than 10. So these two conditions need to be met. If they're not met, then we're stuck. We have to stop. So usually, the first one is not a concern. For example, if we're polling voters, our sample has to be less than 5% of the total population in the US. So with 300 some million people, there's no way we're going to get anywhere close. In this case, we, put, we have 200 in our sample. We have 25,000 in total. So that's capital N. Okay, so 5% of that is 0 0.05 times 25,000. And if I want to use my calculator, 0.05 times 25,000, that's 1250. That means we can go to at most, 12, we can take at most 1250 in our sample. We have 200, so we're okay. We can get it, we can take as many as 1250. We only took 200. Then the next one, NP1 minus P, that's a straight calculation. N, P, 1 minus P, all multiplied. We're told that N is 200. We're told that P is 0.1. If P is 0.1, then 1 minus P is 0.9. Since 1 minus 0.1. So we have to multiply these together. 200 times 0.1 times 0.9 equals so in our case, this equals 18. Is it more than 10? Yes. So both of our conditions are satisfied. So yes, we can do it because our sample is small enough and this NP times 1 minus P is big enough. Determine the mean. This is tricky, but stupid tricky. It's just like the previous problem, where if one person had a mean of 266, then 19 of them still had 266. Here, the total has a mean of 0.1, so a part of it also has a mean of 0.1. In other words, if 10% of the world, if 10% of the US likes strawberry ice cream, and you talk to 100 people, you would expect that a 10% of the 100 people would also like strawberry ice cream. Okay, so the mean of the proportion stays the same. 10% of the world, 10% of the people you talk with. The standard deviation is the trickier part. The formula for the standard deviation for proportions is the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. So this is a straight calculation. Here p is 0.1. If p is 0.1, so 10% say yes, then 90% say no, that's 1 minus p. n was 200. And we just need to use a calculator or Excel let me use Excel again. 
equals the square root of 0.1 times 0.9 over 200. And so you see I typed in this formula, the square root of 0.1 times 0.9 over 200, and that is three decimal places, 021. So right now, here we're just doing some calculations without saying what we're going to use it for. What you can remember now, and what we'll see next week, sigma, or the standard deviation, measures how spread apart things are. So it measures the accuracy. Further spread apart, less accuracy. Less spread apart, more accuracy. So we are starting to do our accuracy calculations, but we're not actually using them yet. This week, we're just starting to do the calculations. Next week, we're going to start using them.